What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another great edition of No Love Philly, the podcast dedicated to artists, activists, musicians, comedians, breweries, basically anybody in, around, or touring through the city of brotherly love that makes this place as awesome as it is. Uh, today, we got a banger for you, man. Uh, we are finishing off that uh, end of summer fest. I know it's been a while. I took a little bit of a break. I had to. Uh, work started getting crazy. Things started getting insane. Um, I was trying to figure out what I'm going to do with my life. Uh, I've got it figured out, though, now, man. And uh, now it's just a matter of time of fitting everything in, getting everything together, um, making good on the interviews that I've, that I have and, uh, coming through with some new ones. I got some stuff in the pipe, man, that I'm hoping, like I'm hoping just pans out. Um, and we're going to keep it going, keep everything. I'm probably going to go down to one a week, man. I think that's fair. Uh, when I try to do two a week, it just gets, it gets insane. Um, but for now, what we have going on is we're finishing off the end of summer, um, fest with Rob Con. Um, or sorry, so I, I take that back, Con Con um, slash Into Summer Fest. Um, this time around, we've got Cast and Chaos and Vital Stats. Um, cool group of people, man. Cast and Chaos, awesome story, super committed, uh, almost an Evanescence type uh, feel to it. I'm sure they get that a lot. I'm pretty sure they hate it. They don't, they may not like being um, compared to that, but uh, it's kind of honestly what it, what it reminded me of. And I, I mean, they're, they're taking it very serious. Um, Vital Stats, a totally fun group of dudes. Uh, homeboy never wears a shirt on stage. Uh, they are exactly what it's like to be 20 something year old dudes and, and loving every minute of it. Minute of it. Uh, it's a fun cast, man. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, both bands, super cool. Uh, very awesome. Make sure you check them out if you can. Um, now let's get on to our show list. Uh, Cast and Chaos actually has a show coming up uh, Halloween at Connie's on Friday, October 27th. Uh, Riot Nerd has a burlesque to Rob Riot Nerd. Dude, I, I got these guys on the podcast and they are awesome. Um, they're going to be the next, uh, not the next episode after this, but the week after. The week of Halloween, I believe, is when, when they're coming out. Um, but they have a lot of fucking badass shows going on, man. Uh, RiotNerd.com, you should check that out. But... Um, on October 13th, they have the burlesque tribute to Rob Zombie at Bar 2300, as well as Smells Like Children Industrial Party the same night at the same place. Um, then you also have Sunday, October 15th, you have the Halloween Craft Bazaar sponsored by PBR. These dudes are sponsored by PBR, man. How fucking awesome is that? Uh, they are sponsored by PBR. Um, they're having that uh, Sunday, October tw- October 15th, the Halloween Craft Bazaar. Uh, so you make sure you check that out. October 21st, they uh, have the Philadelphia Monster Ball at Trocadero. October 22nd, you can totally uh, go to their totally 80s karaoke at the Callback Bar. October 27th, you uh, they have I Remember Halloween Party at Ortlieb's. Um, and then, oh, if you get a chance, man, so you're going to want to check out this next episode. We have Ramon Bender on, and he's hilarious. Just Google him. He's hilarious. He's got a lot of stuff going on. Um, check him out. I, I was hoping to find some shows list for him, but I didn't find anything off the bat. Uh, you got Truck Fighter. Uh, our friends from Holy Smoke are going to be performing on that bill, and Truck Fighter is taking place um, at Voltage Lounge on Sunday, October 15th. Truck Fighters, man. I can't wait. And uh, Holy Smoke. We just interviewed them a couple episodes ago, so you want to make sure you check that out. Fucking Guar. Guar is coming through, dude. Did you know they do a barbecue? A fucking barbecue. I, 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 that's going to be one of my life goals is to be able to go to barbecue. Um, but they are coming in here. Uh, they, they, it's like a Halloween show, man. It's, uh, it is a Halloween show, and they have, uh, they have a fucking awesome show, man. It's filled. They spray the, the crowd with blood. Um, then according to what their, their press people say is, uh, barbaric intergalactic scum dogs hailing from the deep in the ice of Antarctica and they want blood. Um, but they are known for their bloody interactive stage shows. They kill, kill, kill. Um, they did a uh, warp tour as well as a uh, riot fest. Um, but their new album, the blood of gods is going to be released, released by, um, metal blade records on October 20th. So that's coming up. Um, but you can check them out, man, on 1029, 1029 at the Trocadero. 
Um, that is going to be an awesome show. I don't think that there's any better way to spend Halloween. Then you got Anti Flag coming to the Electric Factory on 11 3 and Dying Fetus at TLA on 1125. Um, so Anti Flag at Electric Factory on November 3rd, Dying Fetus on November 25th. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy this episode. I enjoyed putting it together for you. And I uh, can't wait to see you out and about at these shows, man. So here they are without any further ado Cast and Chaos and Vital Stats. Later. And we are on, man. Uh, let me see what we got here. Cool. We are Plunge golden. Yeah, man. So uh, great show. Thanks. You fucking Thanks came so out much. fucking head first uh, when we first started playing with that badass scream, right? Thanks. Yeah, yeah. yeah, man. I, you'll have to hold that microphone super close just to let you know as we do All the right. interview. Uh, so why don't you guys tell everybody who you are, what the name of your band is, right. names and instruments. All right. We're uh, Chaos and Chaos. I'm Nick Sandone. I play guitar. Now, <laughs> used to play bass. Uh, recently, we went to a five-piece, and uh, now I moved to guitar. Aubrey Johnson, I'm the lead singer. I'm Plugs. I'm their drummer. Jason Aston, I'm the bassist. So we would never know you were the drummer unless you took off your mask, which was uh, it's a pretty yeah. badass mask, my friend. Appreciate it. It is. Appreciate it, it, it. Very Mad Max. I enjoyed it very yeah, much. Yeah, it like it's one of my favorite movies. Yeah, right on. Oh it? yeah. So what do you, I, I, you look like, a, like, I don't know, what do you do for a day job? I'm imagining welder, but it's got to be just because of the mask. I was actually a preschool teacher <laughs> for seven years. The yeah. scariest fucking preschool <laughs> teacher. <laughs> yeah, I was a preschool teacher. I didn't had to really. Quit, had to quit because he gave kids nightmares, right? You know what? The kids loved me. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. It's just like I walked in, whoa, we got fucking tattoos. <laughs> they just didn't say the F-bomb. <laughs> but it would have been more badass. That's awesome, man. Um, so how did you guys? how did you guys get together? I guess I'll take the reins on this one. Um, so uh, myself and our guitar player, DC, who unfortunately is uh, stuck down in Miami tonight, um, DC and I got together. We we had worked together previously a very, very long time ago, and we both found ourselves in a situation where we wanted to start a band. So we got together, and we wrote a few songs and just started looking for other band members. Knew Nick here through a mutual friend, and he came on board, and then... Um, Plugs here came on board next, and then um, Jason uh, came on board through me, and so now here we are. We're a five piece. I, I feel like it's a savings account. Like you just get a dollar, and then another <laughs> dollar, and you just like <laughs> pretty much, it yeah. Up. It was it's like so two, and then three, and then four, and then five. <laughs> so uh, that's awesome, man. So how do you mentioned Florida? Are you guys Philly based, or where are you all from? We're, we're definitely like Philly based. We're around like South Jersey area. He dwells. Well, actually, these guys are in Delaware. Um, but uh, no, our guitar player recently got a, a, a new job, got reassigned to Miami for, um, he works for the airport, so uh, oh. he gets flights back and forth, so he still like comes in and uh, practices with us, and we write Get stuff together. Get the fuck out of here, yeah. are you serious? He, commu- yeah, like he commutes, <laughs> commutes, really? yeah. Really? Yep. Every weekend he comes up here. And wow, yeah, yeah. man, that's dedication. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So this must be something that you guys are taking extremely seriously. Yes, that's what, definitely. And I, and I kind of got that vibe once I saw kind of, um, you know, your loaded equipment, unloaded, your process is, is what I'm trying to say. R- nice. Very honestly, is that it wasn't just like dudes pulling the shit out of their car and like <laughs> sucking it up. Um, I think I saw you micing up. You had a rig in your ear so that you could hear everything that's going on. Yeah. So it's something that you guys have put. You guys have got matching outfits, right? Yeah. So it's something yeah, that you yeah. guys have put a lot of like thought into and, and something. That Definitely. How long, how long has it been that you guys have been together? <laughs> well, um, when we actually started, uh, well, I've been together with these guys, and that was when we were only a three-piece. Like, uh, we're still writing, and uh, it's only been, like, a year and maybe two months for me to be in that band. And then slowly, w- when did you come aboard? I came in two months ago. Yeah. What the hell? Two <laughs> months ago, and what was it? Like, six practices, learned all their songs, and boom. <laughs> Here wow, I am. Dude. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, I joined about, like, two weeks ago. <laughs> Are you serious, yeah. dude? <laughs> the crazy part was was when we came up with the idea, like, all of us just plotted this whole steampunk thing, and I had two weeks to create my mask, and then the name Plugs uh, came from, if you look at my mask, there are, like, like, different plugs and all these puzzle pieces, and it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of crazy, but... I don't know. I just thought, you know, I had a big love for steampunk, but like you said, Mad Max, and you know, you're the first person that's actually said that. So <laughs> y- you won my heart tonight. So, so <laughs> awesome, <okay>. man! <laughs> but I think we could be Facebook friends. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah. I had you tonight. It's all right. But uh, 
But yeah, everybody keeps asking like what my real name is, and I won't I won't say my real name. Uh, That's very modest now, of you. Yeah, but when we're behind the camera, then one of these guys will talk to me because, yeah. I won't talk when, when it's like once the mask is on, it's a different character. Everyone that you know that wears masks say that that it's yeah. kind of like one of those things that when you put that on, you're no longer like you in the sense that you're not restricted by anything anymore. Yeah, it was you created. Know? I mean, it was crazy because I uh, I had a really bad ear issue. I had multiple surgeries. Um, my eardrums are actually like very scarred, so they're surprised I can actually still hear. So my character plugs was I was always having earplugs, everything in my ears. And at one point, I was at, I was telling my parents, there's no way I'm going to play music ever again. And ever since then, I just created this, this character that just doesn't talk. That could have been me along, you know, if this all happened. So that's why it's like they created me to continue to keep going. That's an awesome so, story, man. So now, but I'm still talking, so it's a So <laughs> I still feel, though, I still feel like I kind of have a, a vague story, and, and if I don't, if I leave it like this, I'm going to go home and I'm not going to be able to sleep at night. So you guys, you're all from different places. I mean, we're talking Delaware, Jersey, I, where was it? Philly, Jersey, Philly. So how did you guys find each other? Like, how did that, how, do, how did you guys come in? How did so many, I mean, it's not like you guys just, like, bumped into each other on the L, you know what yeah. I mean? So well, I, uh, I used to play in a cover band, so I used to play all, like, South Jersey area. The band was called Your Mom. Okay, oh, I'm going to say, dude, you look like you play in a cover band. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Damn, that sucks. Man, that's rough. But no. Uh, I could have placed a $50 <laughs> bet on that and uh, won. <laughs> I didn't want to be. I was only in there for four years, and I was always an original artist, always. And, uh. And yeah, so I love writing. And I'm a badass stuff. vocalist, bro. Oh, thanks like, for man. real, man. You really, <laughs> you. you really are. Thank you. But uh, I, um, I overheard. Um, w w our, our cover band was, our guitar player was looking elsewhere. So we were like preparing for possibly us like splitting ways. And I was at one show. It was like a rock show where there was multiple uh, bands there. And one of her friends' band was playing, and she was singing. And I overheard someone talk about, um, "Hey, Aubrey, are, are you still looking for a bass player?" I didn't approach her at the time, but I took that and just locked it away. And I was like, if anything ever happens, I'm going to see what's up with this. And eventually something did happen. I went and I hit up her friend. I was like, hey, is that girl Aubrey still looking for a bass player? I, I'm like, I'm normally a guitar player, but I've been, I was playing bass for the cover band because we, they couldn't find a bass player. So I just did it. Um, so I was already had the equipment and everything. I was like, let me see what this is about. And I hit them up and they sent me some tracks, uh, worked out what they really like really wanted to sound like with a full band because it was just two of them um and i thought it would be something i wanted to invest my time in and and uh i instantly clicked with the guitar but just shame dc isn't here man because yeah. we are like brothers man we we clicked so our yeah. writing it's scary our our writing styles are very similar when he does something i'll finish the lick and he, we just look at each other like whoa it's it's a really cool experience i never experienced anything like it before with another guitar player and now that we have another bass player to be able to sit down and, co and co-wrote and I, then i'm actually playing it too live instead of going to bass like right, yeah. it's so cool to be able to play what i originally wrote and yeah it's funny that you you went in as a bass player yeah. only being a guitar player right i mean like well i'll fucking fill this spot real quick <laughs> yeah. and then like Somebody, something happens, and you're back yeah. to what you were wanting to do in the first place, yep. right? Yeah, it's 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 awesome, and and it was a good thing it happened the way it did in the scenario that happened this weekend that uh, I was able to pick up and play DC's parts for the most part, and uh, and kind of not have to worry about what are we gonna do now in the situation. So it, it definitely worked out really good. I think that's a that's probably a something the bands that are, that are listening should take in that it's important to know all roles, right? Yep. Just yep. in case something does happen. Like, shit, we can find a basis real quick, you know what I mean? Or, or what, whatever it is, but at least this void can be filled, right? Yeah. So yeah, I think that's, that stands and, and tests to you guys' is like professionalism in, in sort of a way, Thanks. you know what I mean? That it's not yeah. going to let something um, like somebody leaving destroy what you guys have built so far. You yeah. know what I mean? That's important. So you guys are a year in right now. <laughs> uh, what about an album? We are currently uh, starting to wrap up our, our EP uh, with uh, Zero by One Studios. And, uh, Damn, that's another one. So you guys are another band that's worked with Zero by One. Yes. Those dudes are here. I'm gonna have to book an interview with them. Probably not today, <laughs> but another time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They're they're awesome people. Great to work with. Um, it's been a pleasure, um, and I, I can't wait. Uh, hopefully, I'm, I was hoping for maybe late fall to have to have our album released. Um, so, there's something to look forward to for sure. 
are you guys looking to build a tour around that album? Is that something that's in the works or possibly? It, it possibly, we all are like have decent full time jobs and have a lot of responsibilities. Which we all want to leave to do music yeah. full time. So hey, I, I'm a country singer on the side too. <laughs> no, I'm dead serious. <laughs> I just don't have the twang. Yeah, no, that's what I do. And these guys, yeah, they just make too much money. That's <laughs> awesome, man. I so <laughs> what if I said I was a porn star? Would that kind of count? No, okay. Fuzzy Lumpkins wouldn't go out anymore? Go ahead. So, I mean, ultimately, yeah, we, we would love to tour. We, I mean, we, regardless of the fact that we have day jobs, this is all we want to do. And that was a requirement to come into this band. Even when DC and I first got together, we interviewed each other before we ever sat down to write a song. Because I said, look, I, I have a master's degree. I'm a therapist. I love it. It's not my dream. This is my dream. So it's the same thing with him. So we were both like, but do you realize that, you know, I drop everything? You have to be on board. And we were both just, yeah, yeah, I'm on board. I'm on board. And we said, okay, anybody who comes in here, they need to have the mind frame where, okay, yeah, you have to make a living, but this is what we want to do. This is our goal. All right, no bullshit. So everybody has that Everybody has that same mentality, right? Yeah, all, she put me in a straight jacket, and I had to. <laughs> no, I was like, I came in the band. I was like, oh, man, this preschool thing's really awesome. <laughs> and then she shoved me in a closet, f fed me baby food for about a week, put me in a straight jacket. Nah, no, it's true. Wa waterboard you until you say yes. Pretty much, right? yeah. It, it, was, it, was, it was a struggle, you know. It's like, man, man, this, this, this teaching career is so right. totally dope. And no, nah, it was, nah, it was uh, pretty much I met them through Zero by One Sound Studios. Um, the producer wrote my manager – and was like, hey, there's a kick-ass band that I feel this guy would be perfect for. And I came in and fell in love with the singer and then fell in love with the kind of bass player and then kind of fell in love with the lead guitar player. And but then I really fell in love with the singer's boyfriend. And, you know, it was like, man, this guy is, this guy is a good-looking dude. He sits on a couch very well. And I was like, I got to be in this band. <laughs> so now he's going to talk. Yeah, so uh, I'm the lead singer's boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I, I suppose that's worth a mention. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> like, no, nah, I, uh, I got introduced to the band while I was dating Aubrey and uh, fell in love with the music. And uh, at the time, uh, I didn't know uh, Nick was a guitar player. I just thought he was just a bass player. And then they they started discussing about Nick moving to guitar, and they were looking for a bassist. And it was in. It was a long talk, but uh, they eventually auditioned me, and here I am. But uh, it, it, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I think it's funny that you had to go through the same audition process. Oh, it, is everybody like, oh, oh no, definitely. if you suck, we're cutting you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so here's, here, so here's. Uh, this is a real serious question, though. All right. So everybody's made that commitment. Let's be honest. Therapists don't make pennies, right? So, or maybe maybe they do. I guess. My question is. I, w I work with. I work with drug addicts, okay. so <laughs> I, I don't make a million dollars. I love what I do, but right. I don't make a million dollars. So here's, me. but here's the question: How much will it take for you all to leave your day jobs? What is that number? It's a question that I ask a lot. But no. what, what's the number that would be like? Okay, if I'm making this much a year, I, I can, uh, I'll quit. I can answer that right away. Yeah, I could too. All right, go for it. Yeah. Okay. So my response is, um, as long as I can pay my bills. I'll do it. Oh, that, that's, that's it. So 12000 If 12000 was enough to pay my bills, I'd do it. I have a mortgage. My biggest thing is you got one life to live. You take the chance. I've seen bands like I See Stars, uh, guys that worked or they, they went to high school, worked at a car wash and left their job and went out. And they're huge now. I've seen bands literally pick up, leave their houses, went out. And they're huge now. And, you know, me personally, I'm a very big believer in God. Uh, he's going to put me in the right direction that I need to be. And he already put me here. So, And I'm standing right here. So it's for me, I go right now. $363 a month. Wow, dude. That's all that's, I need. That's easy, dude. He's done the math like so many times. dollars That's it, dude. Yeah, that's all I need. I'll sell everything I own and live in a van. 
want your number. Nothing. You're not willing. To, you're not willing to say. If I can make like forty thousand a year. Okay, so I can hear that. So my thing yeah. is that if I can, so I went to school to be a teacher, right? Mm-hmm. So if I can make a teacher salary doing this, then I can walk away. And I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll gladly do this yeah. forever. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, but that's I, I'm always curious to know what what's that number like. I guess in my mind is if I can get somebody else to think it, right? And then, like, no, if I can sure. get them to think it and say, shit, if I can make this, then I'll quit. And then they work towards making that, and they're able to quit. Man, I'm fucking happy. Yeah, like, yeah that's, I, I would love It'd be awesome, to. right? I, would, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to convince you guys to quit your jobs. Yeah. you guys quit your jobs, and can we do this full time? Yo, I'm a fleet manager right now. If I could quit and do music for my other – making close to what I just said, uh, I wouldn't even be a conversation. I love music. I've always I, – I, like, live off of music, man, like – just getting in a, I love driving just because I'm in my car and I put my music on and listen and sing like uh, oh, traffic jam on 76 oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> can't fucking yeah. wait right? it sucks I have a clutch but <laughs> 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 but the music yeah I, I love music man it's there's nothing better in the world man that's awesome man well hey guys is there anything else that you would like to add anything that you'd like to uh, go for it so mathematically in my head I just did this if you play 20 shows a month and you make eight hundred dollars. You make forty four thousand three hundred dollars. It's the only way he's going on tour. <laughs> no, but um. So what would a tour look like? What would a tour? What would a tour for you guys look like? How? What would it look like? I, that is a very. Like, yeah, I dude. mean, you know. These are the questions I'm going to force you into so that like, it gets you guys thinking about I it. I mean, I think personally, if it was a really good number and they gave us a shot, and it was like, hey, look, here's your shot. If you do it, you got other tours. Ahead. I would say, you know, three to four weeks, you could probably do it to actually make a steady way of actually paying bills. But a lot of times now booking agents will only go two weeks minimum now because what happens is, is if, let's just say, your touring vehicle breaks down and you're just doing a week, it's game over now because no way you're getting to point A and point B all the way to point G. So nowadays they want you to do two weeks, and two weeks now is about $1,500. It's um, so the last time I checked. That's and a hard split between five people. And, and I mean, and that's the good thing is – Except l- for this guy. He only needs $300, so it works out perfect <laughs> for him. He's like, but shit. I mean, the, bi- the biggest thing is, is there, there's a lot of bands that will do two weeks a month sometimes. And they can make about thirty to thirty-five thousand a year, but that's before taxes and all of this. And that's something that like the future artists don't know. And that's what we want them to know is, hey, if you want to do this, understand it's a very hard road because you're going to have instruments break. I mean, as a drummer, cymbals, sticks, they start to add up. But as a vocalist, you gotta save your voice. Screamer, you gotta save your voice. Strings, everything. It comes down to a T. So I mean, if you want to do it. Do it, but understand there's always going to be bumps in the road, but there's always a way to pave that out, and you'll be successful one day. Just say, I can and I will, and you'll you'll be good. I believe that, man. That's on oh, yeah. some Gary Vaynerchuk shit right yeah, there. Man. I'm fucking down with that shit. Hell yeah, I just take my vitamins every day and whoosa. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. Awesome, man. Is there anything else that you all would like to add? Um, on Black Friday this year, we are uh, doing a show. We're uh, opening up for Michael Graves, Ex Misfits. Oh, right. Um, awesome. How'd yeah. you get hooked up with that show? Um, through uh, The Famous and Fallen. They uh, they were already booked on there, and he uh, hooked up with Derek from uh, I believe it's like NARP or um, yeah NARP and uh, they um, shout out they, to NARP. They, yeah, yep, they um, reached out to me and said, "Hey, would you guys cast chaos be interested in this?" And I asked them guys, and we were all on board. And I got back with Derek, and uh, we we worked it all out, and boom, we we got we got the gig. So uh, really happy and excited to be to be playing that show. Oh, that's going on Black Friday, right? Yes. That's the Friday after Thanksgiving, yep. correct? So, uh, get stuffed, fill up with lots of food, get ready to drink some beers on Friday. Yeah, right? that's right. Awesome guys. Hey, thank you so much for your time. When you guys drop your album, we link up and maybe we'll do a longer podcast. Sounds Definitely, good? man. I appreciate right. it, man. Thank Excellent. you. Thank you very much. Thank All you right, very much, man. Bye bye. Three, four, and we are checked and that's ready to go. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are still here at the uh, the end of summer music fest uh, slash con con, and I am here with. Why don't you guys tell me who you guys are? We are Vital Stats from Philadelphia, PA. Fuck yeah! Uh, what are your names, instruments? My name is Jacques Saint Clair, and I'm the singer. I'm Chongo, and I do percussion. Cody Cox, I'm guitar. Former Secretary General Utan. Okay, so Chongo definitely that sounds like somebody uh, that that plays on the drums. Right. Yes. And your name again? 
Jacques Sinclair. Jacques Sinclair. Of course it would be. That definitely sounds like a guy who takes his shirt off in the, on the stage and uh, serenades yeah, right. old ladies. Uh, <laughs> so, man, do. you guys had a wild show. Tell me a little bit about it, man. Well, we did a lot of flexing. We did a lot of shaking. We played a lot of fast, hard soul music. And we gave people what they wanted. They got they got a great show, man. Um, so how long you guys uh, wanted to add to that? Uh, no, I was waiting for the next question here. <laughs> oh, all right, man. <laughs> we gave them tasty guitar licks, too. So, uh, yeah, dude, so how did you guys, uh, well, first of all, how do you guys describe your, your style of music, man? Our style of music is trash soul. It's uh, Trash soul. Yeah, we made that. Uh, actually, Jacques St. Clair made that up because, well, he's a genius. He knows a lot about trash and soul and physics. And uh, you put them all together and we get this conglomeration of baby-making funk. And uh, it's rock and roll with funk and soul and Motown. Motown, funk, rock and roll, we got it. Got it all here, man. Yeah, I describe our music as a Motown soul during a punk basement party. Everyone's just going crazy, having a good time, rocking and rolling and exerting as much energy as they can and having a blast doing it. You guys are a fucking wild outfit. I got to tell you that right fucking now, man. Uh, how the hell did you guys find each other, man? Because, I mean, I'm thinking, I'm seeing a sailor, a general. Sure. Is that right? Did you say well, general? Did I say that? Well, I sailed general. my boat up the Mississippi <laughs> from Lafayette, Louisiana. No, I met these gentlemen uh, on the streets of Philadelphia one day, and uh, I don't know how we met. I just know where we're going. Fucking A, man. Chongo took a choo-choo from Chattanooga. Holy shit. That's a mouthful, man. So if I get you guys, uh, you guys have any albums out right now? Or we do. do. We just released an album called Trash Soul uh, in July, and we are playing that record nonstop at our shows. And we're in the works with new material too, but at a leisurely pace at the moment. Leisurely pace. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, can get it. Their Trash Soul on iTunes, Spotify. Amazon, Google, all of the above. We're all over the place. Look out for us. Well, aren't you guys from the fucking future? You didn't even make a CD. You guys said, fuck that. We're just gonna we have keep CDs, it too. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> if you want to get physical, we can make that happen. Oh, shit. God damn. You all some sexy motherfuckers. I got to tell you that, man. You guys are definitely a good time, right? Um, yeah, man. So you, how long have you guys been together? What have you guys been? We've been together about five years. Uh, for real, for real, five years? Yeah, for five years. Yeah. And one album. One album, yeah. Hey, that's just how it works. <laughs> a song, a, a song a, a year. There's a lot of EP. sex crammed into that one uh, album. Right. Uh, like song. between each other, or like I mean, just between whoever right, wants right to on. take it. Right. <laughs> 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 what else can I say? <laughs> All right. Well, since, since we're going that route, who here uh, uh, gets laid the most after a show? Ooh. <laughs> yeah, this guy, Chongo. Uh, the, uh, Chongo, the guy that bangs yeah. would be the one, right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> He's just run that choo choo. <laughs> run that choo choo, right? You got it. <laughs> uh, so, all right. Well, since we're going down that same vein, what is a uh, a good uh, pickup line after a show uh, to to try to wing some tail in? I usually just walk up to a girl and I say, "Hey, Daddy, do what Daddy does," and then she usually can tell what I mean. <laughs> Chongo looks at someone. He chooses who he wants. He says nothing. And he gestures with his eyes where he's going, and they always follow. Oh, shit, you're smooth. I just try to stay out of trouble as much as possible, and uh, trouble always finds me. I find my way to the closest Taco Bell and just seeing who's down for some cheesy gordita crunch. Ooh, I usually have that after, but... Uh, <laughs> Fucking uh, people want to get a hold of you. They want to find out more about you. Where the hell do they do that? Sure. So we have a Facebook and Instagram. We have www.thevitalstats.com. Why was Vital Stats taken? It was. By a medical industry? <laughs> Probably. Fuck those guys. Yeah, I'm going to sue them. <laughs> Fuck them. That's right. We fought them. They fought hard back. <laughs> but yeah, you can find us on the internet and, of course, at one of our shows. Hey, so are you guys playing? Are you guys playing uh, out of the, out of town? Are you guys ever out of Philadelphia? We're actually playing Bristol, PA, late tonight at the Broken Goblet Brewery, and we're playing Dilworth Park, but that's in Philly, uh, next month. 
on I, the I just 15th. W- I just want to point out real quick uh, that you guys are playing later tonight, and everyone here has at least one fucking drink in them, and so you guys are starting early. That's true, and I'm going to drive all these gentlemen because we are safe. <laughs> Alle- alle- allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For uh, purposes of the police report later. So uh, how soon after you start playing do you take off your shirt? I always take it off after the first song. You got to give the people what they want, and they want to see muscles. Yeah, muscles. That's they exactly like to see. see the way that my body flexes and gyrates. Take your shirt off right now. Hold on. I'll take it off right now. I'll take it off. Chango's Chang- 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 setting some eyes on. Ladies and gentlemen, the jacket is she just coming didn't off. Make, she didn't make eye contact. That was the only coat. thing that went wrong there. Suspenders you know that, right? down. Oh, shit, Tank it's top happening. Up. He really is yeah. taking off his And there's shirt. the nipples. Oh, my. Oh, fuck. If uh, you could see what I can hear. If <laughs> <laughs> you could feel what I can taste. <laughs> <laughs> You'd take it, too. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, fuck, man. I don't even know where to go with this. Uh, so uh, he d- we're in for those who cannot obviously see us, we are in fucking uh, the parking garage of the Dave and Buster's. This dude just got half naked in front of us because I guess this is his fucking... His regular, uh, uh, I don't know, which this is your environment, it's right? It's not the this first time he's been naked in the Dave & Buster's parking lot, that's <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Most sober he's ever been, though. Most sober, all right, man. Uh, so fucking, yeah, man, w- Jesus, I don't. I really seriously don't know where to go with this. Why do your pants look like they're from the 1800s? I'm just, uh, you, you look like you just jumped off a ship. These are the only boats. pants that won't, uh, that can handle suspenders that oh, okay. I own. All the right. other ones just split because, you know. My dangle just starts wangling. And they handle the daddy package well. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> All Jesus. right. I mean, uh, is there anything else that you want to plug, promote, talk about? Is there anything? Oh, uh, no. I mean, we have our show on uh, the 15th of October at Dilworth Park. We got our album Trash Soul that just came out, so take a look. It's good. And I'd like to thank Dave and Busters, of course. Yeah, we'd like to thank Saul and Gravity Given Productions and Dave and Busters and Dockside and everybody. And if you want to see this guy with his shirt off, we got tons of videos and live performances on YouTube. So check out the Vital Stats. Well, actually, I think it's just Vital Stats on YouTube. And you can see this sexy bot. Sailor mm-hmm. shirt has got it all, man. All right, guys. Thank you so much for your time. Thank I really you. look forward to it. I hope one day we can get together and do a, a longer form podcast. Right now I'm out here and I'm doing like very short, very, very, very short podcasts. Eight minutes long. Very, very short. I usually go 35, 40 minutes. Um, longer in bed, but uh, what we'll do is uh, uh, we'll definitely set up a, a longer podcast with you guys sometime soon. You guys definitely look like a good time. I'm thinking, just judging by it, it should be a drink cast because yeah. fuck yeah, you guys yeah. look like a great time. <laughs> yeah, All right, man. Down. Thank you so much for your time, guys. Thank you. Thank you.